I'm ready to. Hello? Yeah. <laughs> I can never tell if we're actually live or not, like when I use this program now, because it, I don't know, it's just different than, than what I expect. So I think we're live now. So if All we're right, live, good. Hi, everybody. <laughs> Let me share our link. Hey, we're live. Look at that. Cool. Yes. It's just the three of us tonight. It's wonderful. So, yeah. Here we go. Oh, I'm sorry. I have you. We're not spirits. We're not a um, spirits book. We're what is spiritism? So, hi, everybody. And um, let's begin with a short prayer. Um, is it okay if I pray tonight? I'm in the mood. Yes, please, <laughs> so, please, please, please. please. So, so let's just take a moment and we'll settle ourselves, elevate our thoughts, and we'll just take a moment to remember why we're here tonight, what we came here for. We came here to learn, to take the next step on our human evolution, to grow and to evolve, uh, to share with each other our knowledge and our experience and share our time with each other, which is one of the most precious forms of charity that we can give is to share our time with each other. So we're, we're grateful to be here. Um, knowing even though sometimes it seems like a lot of work to come to a, a study group to prepare and to you know go through a stressful day and get here, we know that what we're doing is, is the right thing and we're grateful for the opportunity and even though it seems like work and like we're doing for other people really the gift is is the one that we give ourselves and uh, and we can't forget that and so we're, we're grateful for the assistance we get from our friends our guides our mentors in the spirit world sitting right beside of us uh, always guiding us inspiring us and motivating us and remembering the one who came here to teach us, our Master Jesus Christ, we always follow in his footsteps and we remember the words he told us to love one another as we love ourselves, to love our enemies and to love our neighbor. So with that, with our eyes gazing upward towards the heavens, towards our future life. We ask for permission to begin our work tonight. So be. Thank you. So Wonderful prayer. Thank you. I say the same prayer like every time. No, it's not true. <laughs> but sometimes <laughs> I mean it. <laughs> That's not true. Your prayer is great. Um, and um, so, okay, well, welcome everybody to our study group tonight. We're still reading What is Spiritism? A book by Alan Kardec, um, and we're currently on chapter two, which is called Elementary Notions of Spiritism, and we're on item number seven, uh, which now we're, we've gotten to the heading that's called Concerning Spirits. Um, so, um, I I read over this stuff. I, I've read it before, and I, I reread it before our, our group tonight, and. Um, it, a lot of the things we're talking about here just remind me about the fundamentals of spiritism, which, um, which you know, there was a great lecture here not too long ago about uh, by a real wow. like a real genius. You know, I know it's it really inspiring, motivating. I've but seen it. I was here. Some some of the points in this book are like directly from that, uh, not from the lecture, but the, <laughs> the lecture was based on. <laughs> The lecture was based on the introduction of the Spirits book, which is item number six in the Spirits book. It's like the fundamentals, just like 33 fundamentals. Mm. And a lot of these are, I, I want to say, like probably word for word, like right out of there. Um, so, um, you know, if you're, if you call yourself a Spiritist, I'm not sure, <laughs> you know, I don't, wanna, I don't want to put words in anybody's mouth. If you call yourself a Spiritist, this stuff is just like, okay, yeah, like I get it, I know it, you know. Um, 
So it's kind of boring when I just have two people here that are just going to agree with everything I say. So. That's true. But I know, and knowing you guys, I don't have to worry about that. We have no fight. So we <laughs> ask yeah. you, little people from the Facebook, yeah. <laughs> to come against. But um, but when I was reading it, I try to I try to come up with ideas how we can make this stuff, um, you know, written in in the 1850s, 1860s you know, 150, 160 years ago, how we can make it apply to our, our lives today. And, and it's not that hard for <laughs> to come up with ways, you know, things that you think about. Um, but um, we'll go ahead and start. I'll, I'll read, I'll just read uh, item seven. Okay. And then get going on our discussion. So concerning spirits. Spirits are not, as often imagined, separate beings within creation. They are souls of those who used to live on the earth or on other worlds stripped of their corporeal envelope. Whoever believes in the existence of the soul after the death of the body must therefore also believe in the existence of spirits. To deny spirits is to deny the soul. Question. I got questions. You, you I got questions too. Okay, you can go first. Okay. Why do you think, why do we think, let's do a brainstorming here. Why is it so hard for us to grasp this idea? What is what is in what is limiting us? What is not allowing us to understand this as a natural thing? You know, I, I was of the opinion not too long ago that I only believe something if I can see it. Okay. So a lot of people will automatically say, like, well, show me the evidence, or, you know, until then, I'll, I'll continue disbelieving. Um, okay. But what, what I thought was interesting is that, like, if I mention to somebody that I go to a spiritist center, and they're like, well, what do you do there? And I'm like, well, you know, we get a message from dead people a lot of time. Yeah. <laughs> Just cool. bluntly. Yeah. It's like basic. <laughs> you know, and and they're they're like, well, I don't believe in that. You know, but they might be from you know atheists or they might be Christian. And what's interesting is is you would think that um, what I was going to say was that somebody who's Christian in the Bible, there's people talking to spirits, but they might talk, they might call them angels, or they might call them saints. You know, in, in certain you know religions or, or whatever. Um, and and it's interesting because they'll argue against spiritism, but it's almost like they're arguing against their own beliefs, but they'll say like, no, 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 it's different. It's different when we say it, but like what you're saying is blasphemy, you know, or, and, and it's like, it's so I say, how can somebody who like, you know, preaches that, that they follow the, the Bible, you know, the Old Testament and the New Testament also um, say that, like, well, no, we don't have spirits. But you are saying this to discuss with someone that takes the Bible as something important, but for example, if you were discussing that with me, I don't take the Bible as a sacred book. To me, if you say, well, sometimes I have those. Oh, well, it's written in the Bible. Okay, I, Bible to me is a book. Okay, it's a book. It's not a sacred book. So it doesn't count the just because it's in the Bible, I will tend to believe. What if you're talking to me and I don't care about what the Bible says. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. What I'm saying is, why is it so hard for us to get like this idea? There is a continuation of life after death. Why it is so hard? You, you get it? It's a simple question. You know, like, um, those times when you feel, when you feel very sleepy, uh -huh. like, you know, DC sleepy, like... Speak you, a little bit long, <coughs> so people can hear. They can. I, I see the, the green thing. Oh, okay. There. <laughs> oh, now we got a powerful microphone. You can probably oh, hear you gee. fine. I cranked up the game on it. Oh that, my yeah, gosh, this is really good. So, I hope it doesn't sound bad. Yeah. For you, it's probably too much, uh, but for me, it's good. I can see. It's not easy being green. So, you know, like those times. Say this is just an example uh, when you are 
very sleepy and you're trying to focus on, on something maybe you're trying to study this used to happen to me a lot um, mm. I was trying to study and, and pull uh, an all-nighter maybe and I was trying to concentrate on the chapter or the paragraph whatever it was and I just couldn't I just couldn't because I was very sleepy mm -hmm. um, somehow I think this body has that effect on us. I mean, the fact of being in the body, of being incarnated. Mm -hmm. They they always say like we're imprisoned by our bodies, that the spirit feels like imprisoned, and upon yeah. death we feel emancipated. But so you yeah. get that feeling like it's it's like a but sentence. Like know? this numbs us. Mm -hmm. So okay, it, it, but it's um. it's a confusing sensation because like when I'm sleepy and trying to study I believe that I can't study I, I firmly believe that I'm okay or uh, you know or maybe to drive and I, I think I'm sleepy but I think I can drive uh, and, and really I can't so being in the body we believe that we have all capabilities because I can see very clearly. Well, when I'm wearing my glasses, I can see very clearly or hear or touch. Um, so we think that, you know, everything is, we, we are all powerful and senseful in that sense, resourceful in terms of understanding and uh, seeing and, um, you know, getting information and and we're really not this is very limiting so believing at the same time believing that we are all powerful to perceive things and not being at all because we're limited by the body I think that's one of the reasons why um, why we don't grasp the idea. But I'm calling for a rational, rational idea, just rational. That's not rational to me. I mean, Sounds rational to you? Yeah, I mean, what you're saying is, I mean, about why it's hard to believe in the in this like the spirit. What I see is what I believe. I mean, well, but that, it's, that if it's so easy to deny the existence of the spirit. Because we, we tend to think what I see is what I believe. So, you know, not, and not only Even what today, I, where, where we read and hear uh, is studies on uh, synthetic blood, synthetic skin. I haven't read those studies. <laughs> well, they, they're not even new, but you know, yeah. You know what I mean? What I'm trying to think and, and share with you is like, why is it still so hard that, why is it that it's so into place what Kardec is saying here, as you mentioned, published in 160 years ago, why is it still so, like, up to date? Well, you know, it's funny, I, I was thinking too, like, it's along the same line about somebody was saying how people used to, like, be, like, more moral because they were sort of raised that way, and not, not like, too long ago, um, and I, I forget, like, why they were saying that, because they were sort of raised, like, in, like, very religiously, like, here in the United States, at least, you know, and, because it seems like when I meet older people that they have, like, better work ethic and better morals and, and everything just like innately they like know right from wrong better but so it, it almost seems contrary to the law of progress when I meet like younger people today and they don't seem like they have the morals I don't know if I'm just becoming old and I <laughs> you know I'm looking at people that way you know uh -huh. but, but, um, but that's again that's perception it is perception it is perception from the old people it is perception from the young people and they say the morals were higher back in time, but we're coming from World War II and World War One and many other things, 
and so you know maybe not really yeah I mean cause sometimes I wonder like were people really more moral or like did they just not have the opportunity to be immoral like you have today it's just like the world is like a lot more open and accepting and it, it's progress in one way because like it's progress that we're not like punishing people and stoning them as much <laughs> you know yeah. than, than we were not too long ago but in the other sense it's like it's like in lecture we heard last week um, last Wednesday night it's like we go from one extreme to another extreme where, where we go from the extreme of being you know <laughs> like so religious and so like follow the book to the other extreme where we say I don't believe in anything at all because it's like you lied to me about this so everything you know so I'm just gonna <laughs> so I I don't know that had something that, I feel like that had something to do with what you're saying but because society seems more materialistic these days because of the so. secularization of, of society and um, the way you know schools are like the universities in, in America at least are you know it seems more atheist I haven't been to every single one you know <laughs> but the ones that I've I've listened to that always seem to promote that's, atheist ideas that, that thought that's interesting um, what I see when you say that is that years back um, we were told what to think, how to act, way more than we are now. So um, it, it, that's that's why we may have the perception uh, that that morals were higher or you know different, whatever. It's just that uh, now uh, or that uh, there was more religion all over. Mm -hmm. uh, the U.S. was one nation under God. Yeah. Some people want to remove that line yeah. from... So now that, yeah. now that that exists, there is more freedom and we tend to think, oh, then atheism or non-practicing uh, religious people, whatever you want to call it, uh, they are a, a vast majority. But I think what happens is, and, and to me this is a good thing, is that there is a higher degree of personal responsibility over this kind of decisions and practices, practices and searches and, and so on. So it's not so much uh, up to what I'm told uh, by society, my family, uh, school at the time, uh, government, whatever, as to what do I really think, what do I really want, how do I want to evolve? So my personal responsibility, the space for my personal responsibility has grown. It's it's bigger. So even if there's, it seems to be less less people um, practicing a religion. I think the quality of the practices is um, is much higher because of that personal responsibility. So I think that. With it's the pendulum law, so we will, you know, from one one extreme to the other, and then yeah. at some point yeah. we'll end up in the middle. Yeah, yeah. But right. that that things things seem to be getting worse. To, like if you look at things a certain way, but then I'm, I'm, I try to like sort of put a spin on it, or say maybe it just seems that way, and it's gonna, you know, yeah, yeah, uh, I agree yeah. with that. Being a Taoist, you know, everything. Yeah, has I think to the quality of it <laughs> is higher. Yeah. So in the long run, that's. Uh, that that's better and I think that's going to help also to um, grasp that the idea of the spirit um, the, uh, just a quick uh, thought before uh, I, and then to give to Steve again um, or the other thing that just came up in my mind reading, reading this again reading Kardec again is that or maybe many of us still suppose that spirits are a dis distinct class of the creation and not souls of those that once had it or maybe that maybe because we this sense of separation is really strong in us we we feel separated from each other separated from nature separated from the cosmic cosmos cosmic 
cosmos, whatever. We feel separated from everything. We don't understand, we don't feel the connection. We really do think, oh, this is those people. I thought that was just me. The country, those countries, those people, the race, it's all separated and probably many of us, the majority, is still thinking the spirits, they are distinct class of us, that stuff that whoever God, the source created and we cannot be them and they cannot be us and there is no continuation. Could be too. Could be that this is more uh, updated like more for the the type of life we live today that we thought because I look at this I am not the the newest generation the the kids sometimes I I talk with kids and they're like oh yeah of course of course there is no no Diablo of course there is no devil no this is nonsense for them for this new generation is nonsense for them to talk about life after death is like, sure, yeah, of course. It's like a natural thing. It wasn't for me. I, I still, in this incarnation, I believed in in the devil and that was very powerful. So, anyways, but anyways, but still, maybe we are still feeling that we are so separated from the, and we think that the spirits are something else, and we cannot be them. And they cannot be us. Maybe. So maybe until the day that meditation is taught in schools, I don't, I don't know. That's just my opinion. Is like the only real experience I ever had where I really like came into touch with with my spirit was in a deep yeah. meditation. Yeah, yeah. That's a very good point. You know? But it, we have meditation in school, but it's not enough. Yeah, I mean maybe not when I was. Yeah, maybe maybe it's coming around these days. Yeah, you were I, old, I, like yeah. fifty-two, I had, right? I had siesta. <laughs> Anyways. So, generally speaking, people have a mistaken idea about the makeup of spirits. So this goes to what Cynthia was saying, um, uh, that, that people don't understand spirits, which is why spiritism is such a great science, because it's basically... Um, the science of studying spirits and, and the, the other world. Um, hmm. um, so, and that really says a lot about, you know, people are mistaken about spirits, so how are you really ever going to grasp spiritism, grasp the idea of reincarnation, <laughs> you know, um, and all the things, like, because it all, it all, like, makes so much sense, like, the, yeah. like, spiritism doesn't make sense if you just hear, like, a little piece of it, you have to, like, kind of get a whole like mouthful of it before you can oh, yeah. <laughs> before it even makes sense. Uh, um, after that, um, in section nine, Kardec talks about um, the soul, um, the spirit, the spirit, the soul, and the paraspirit, which I think a lot of people I, like. I don't know where they get ideas from because I remember sort of like when I read the spirits book for the first time. Not that this stuff was completely foreign to me, but it was it was like a different perspective on it. And when I so when I read it, I kind of was paying attention. Like, what are they what are they saying about um, the soul and the spirit? <clears throat> because like we've had people even in here say like, well, my soul says this, but my spirit tells me that, and then my Holy Spirit says this, and, and like and it's like they have so many different things, and then my astral body and you know this part, and it's like. It's all confusing. It's like, where do you yeah. read all this crap? <laughs> you know? I mean, it's like, um, and it's if you if you read like spiritual publications, like some people will give you definitions for all these different types of astral bodies and your different layers of your aura, and they, there might be some truth to some of it, you know. But um, I kind of like spiritism for keeping it simple, like. Like three bodies, it's good. That's good enough. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And there might be more layers to it, too. But like, we don't really like need to understand all the other things. And, and um, if there are like multiple layers to my aura, like I, I don't know that that's not really going to help me <laughs> understand. It only kind of complicates things for for me, you know. 
I mean, I guess if it's true, then it's true that we should probably study it, but... <laughs> Actually, the fire spirit is pretty... How can I say? Complex. Consistent with other spiritualists and other segments, and even with the Bible. The fire spirit is the astral body, is the... That one is pretty consistent, but other than that, you're right. It's they're all over the place. Because there's a lot of different words yeah. for the same thing, and that's why I was even saying, even like one, like you read one person might use all the different words, but yeah. not necessarily interchangeably. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so so they're actually trying to say like this is different than that. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. Well, that's true. And and to somebody like to some to, to one of them to hear the word perisphere, they're probably like, what are you talking about? Right. You know. Exactly. So it's it's like you know, I, I think it's actually a term Kardec came up with himself. Right. Uh, basically borrowing from botany, <laughs> with the the plant has a uh, perisperm, which is like part of the seed. Right. Right. Surrounding the seed. Um, yeah. Let me ask you this. Peri means means around. I mean. Around, yeah. Well, let me ask you this. What is the profile of this? If you were you were from another planet. And you had to analyze the population of the uh, Earth. of the people that are incarnated here. Observe it. And what is the profile of this population that cannot conceive that nature can be uh, really? Uh, has a, a total science behind it, but human beings can't. You know what I mean? What is the profile of this civilization that think, oh, nature, you know, they have animals, that they have kind of a natural GPS that can migrate from one place to another. Who taught them that? And, you know, this animal, they have this intelligent instinct and can do this can do that and the plants how wonderful is this plant that grows in this part of the planet and not growing in that part so there is all a science behind nature but there is no science behind the human being just the body and it's wow. just the body and things that science cannot explain is still it is just the body we cannot explain but it's just the body. Well, and, and in item 10, they, like I kind of wanted to mention this too, where it says the solar spirit, which is the intelligent principle that harbors the thought, will, and moral sense. And I thought that's interesting because it's not saying that these things come from the brain. You know, it's not. And so I, I've been like thinking about the brain a lot lately, which, which is interesting because if, if my brain is doing the thinking, then it's thinking about itself, you know, which it, right. might, just, it might just explode. Yeah. <laughs> But, but it's interesting to think that our thoughts aren't coming from, it's not just the neurons firing, it's not just a chemical process, exactly. it's not just an electrical process, it has some kind of a spiritual, exactly. you know, <laughs> source, intelligent principle, so. I think the, uh, the view that this um, alien would get it's it's kind of shocking because human beings know the existence of natural laws and know that natural laws apply to everything in nature except humans so we humans think that those laws are made for everything but for us so what kind of people are they? Uh, what, well, what is the profile of these people? The, the only conclusion that I as an alien could get to uh -huh. is that it's um, it's a proud species, way too proud for their worth. way to soberbia? How do you say soberbia? Uh, snobbish? Or arrogant maybe? Arrogant. Arrogant. Yeah, 
yeah. that it's it's a very arrogant. Well, let's see if you have this word because I'm good. A very arrogant um, species, um, humankind. Yeah, because of thinking that natural laws do not apply to them, that they are something separate from creation and from the universe itself. So that that's that would be my my first um, conclusion uh, as, a, as an alien visiting Earth. Yeah, I think we can all agree it's like when you have your eyes open that like the very least you can have to know is that we don't know everything <laughs> you know yeah and and the smartest people we've had on the planet you know like like recently the, the most brilliant like geniuses that we've had all say like that the more I learn the more I realize I don't know and uh, and just to like have that humility I don't think it's a common quality in the <laughs> in the human species here on this planet. Yeah, L lack of humili humility. I mean, it's not my problem, it's their problem. Right. But, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I wish they could all be as humble as I am. Um, <laughs> um, I don't know, do you want to say anything about that? Or I'll continue on. No, I was, I was just like, why? Again, this is like with, with what Kardec is saying and and that's your fault why I'm asking all these questions because you made me think again like it was 150 years ago can't we like at least move a little bit like half a step 30% of a step into this why can't we discuss this why is it so hard to still uh, uh, find people they're not interested about their spiritual life why is it so hard to have uh, groups of people that are truly, honestly interested in their spiritual development? That's why it's like uh, I, I we have so many. That what I'm saying is we have so many beautiful uh, things and studies and research and advancement. I mean, look at. Look at the development of cell phone. Do you remember cell phone in the, in the 90s? You remember cell phone in the 90s? I, I didn't own one. I, I, I saw owned, one on I owned one, but <laughs> you remember how it was? From that time to now, what we have in cell phone, the, like, how fast this thing is developing, it's amazing what we can do with this today. It is amazing so many things we can do we actually can run a business with this and we don't need anything else but amazingly too i was thinking about this i was at the market the other night because at Publix, and, and i was thinking about how sometimes i order my stuff from Publix. i order it to go so i can order it from my cell phone right I go and i can pick it up and then i can go to a self-checkout register i don't have to talk to anybody <laughs> you know because that's, that's what, amazing that's basically what happened i thought it's funny now our planet we're so connected to each other mm -hmm. and yet we're like becoming more isolated like the that's true the whole like online shopping thing it, it's actually like makes it very convenient to be uh, an introvert <laughs> you know so um, well but that's why i have to start study groups and but stuff, so. but let's but let's think <laughs> yeah. but let's think this if we have reached the point that we for the basic things we have all been taken care of by uh, technology, what does that say? It says that we don't need to spend so much time with that because it is now click, 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 click. So we should focus our attention to other things that are more important. For instance, our spiritual life. Say, don't you think? I was going to say holograms. Holograms? Yeah, we don't have those yet. No, we don't. <laughs> but anyways, you know what I mean? If, if we understand that, for example, people that are born in, in countries like Brazil, for instance, they have to work a lot harder to have basic, basic 
um, uh, things in their lives such as school, uh, hospitals, etc., etc., versus people that are born in countries, in rich countries, they don't have to think about that because if they are born there, in Finland, in Germany, they, when they are born, they have the right to have all those things. What are, they, what are these guys? They don't have to have the same kind of struggles that we have, for example, for instance, in Brazil. So that shows to me, rationally thinking, that they have different struggles. They have to focus their effort, energy, in different things. That is showing something because every country that we are born, we choose, consciously, we choose the majority, the minority, sorry. We choose to be born in that country so we can go, undergo uh, through things that is good for our spiritual life so we can grow spiritually. Like the reason why I'm sure, I know that for, for me it's fact that I was born in Brazil because of the spiritism and spiritual life and then and with that I I need to I I thought with myself I, that's what I hear from within I wanted to make sure I continue studying and developing my spiritual life right so we have different struggles and if we have the technology now to do so many things for us with this it is showing that we should focus on other things that are more important, such as love, such as connect with more with people that we love, and a spiritual life and, and dreams. There are other things too. It's not only spiritual or religious, but other things that are meaningful. Do you agree or disagree? You guys can disagree. Please go ahead. You're preaching to the choir. Yeah. We're here, right? I agree. <laughs> but disagree yeah. with something. No, because we're, no. I mean, we're the ones that come to the Spiritist Center several nights a week. Yeah. Okay. So, I'm yeah, really sorry. We're doing it. Yeah. Uh, really? So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, gosh. But, yeah. Body poopers. Yeah, I mean, you know, we're, that's the reason why we're here, because we want to, I don't know. I don't know why I'm here. I just feel obligated, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> is it, is it your I, I don't. I'm expiating a lot of wrong. Just so you know, I don't. I'm, I'm really, I love this. <laughs> is it your soul or your spirit that's forcing you to come here? It's the Holy Spirit. Or your Paris spirit. <laughs> <laughs> is it your aura? <laughs> <laughs> or your mental my, body? No, it's my astral body. Yes. Your mental body. <laughs> Okay, Steve. Then you, then you lead us. Go ahead. So yeah, well yeah, and it's all it's all interesting. It's all relevant. Um, and then you know, uh, yeah. I feel like sometimes when I read this, what Kardec saying, there are then three essential elements in humans: the soul, the or spirit, and intelligent principle in which thought, will, and moral sense reside. The body, the material covering, the spirit, the peri spirit. I feel like I'm a, we are little kids, you know, that we are, as the movie said, that we can't handle the truth. And we keep avoiding the truth. We keep saying, no, I don't want to grow up spiritually. I want to remain a, a, a crying baby. And I, I, don't wanna, I don't wanna look into that. You, you know, I mean, it's funny because it's like, the reason I'm here, the reason I do this stuff is because I want to like grow and change my life. And I, I hate to admit like how many spiritists I've talked to that like don't get that. Like, I know. <laughs> like I, I, I had a friend that was like not not that old. I don't want to say like, you know, the age, but uh -huh, uh -huh. only a few years older than me saying that like they basically had given up on this incarnation. They're waiting to go back to the spirit world. And like that's that's like you took the information here and you, you did like the exact opposite yeah. of what you told me. Like you twisted it, yeah, and just didn't. You're not you're not living the exactly. like the, the way you know like, like it, it just didn't sink in somehow. And then some people, I mean, some people, and I don't want to judge anybody, but you know they come to the spiritual center for consolation, and it's like you know if you come here f for a while and you need some consolation, but after a while you should exactly. kind of like get it and sort of move on. Exactly. <laughs> and, and I see Grow people up. come exactly. here and 
they've been coming for years and years and they yeah. still want to come in here and cry about their problems you know and, and it's I, true. I can't put myself in their shoes you know I can't say because you know if I was to compare my problems to somebody else's problem no but problem, you're right it's much. a vicious cycle mm -hmm. you're right you're right I mean and, and so it's, it's you know, it's 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 a lot of good information if it's put in the right hands and put to practice the right way. And, yeah, exactly. And, you know, if if you if you like sort of, it's sort of like I said, like you, you can't just like take a, a little piece of spiritism. Like you have to like kind of get through all of it and, yeah. <laughs> and read and study because if, you know you could you could like be like the Anakin Skywalker of spiritism and kind of go to the dark side. You know. <laughs> yeah, just you saying. can. <laughs> just, <laughs> I don't recommend it. Um, that so that was basically nine and ten, talking about the soul and the para spirit. Um, Eleven, twelve, and thirteen. Um, Kardec talks about the death process, and um, very like interesting imagery we use for death, um, saying that basically when the outer envelope, the body is spent, can no longer function, it succumbs. And the spirit rids itself of it, like the fruit rids itself of the, the husk. The tree rids itself of its bark, and the snake of its skin. In other words, as if it were taking off an old and useless garment, this is what we call death. So it really challenges <laughs> our materialistic idea that like death is the end; it's nothingness. Um, and uh, you know, and then it, it, and then he's calling our body like rotten fruit, basically too. <laughs> It's like yeah. just a, um, just like a, a old clothes, yeah. ropa vieja, right? And uh, so I have a question about thirteen, and and you've mentioned that before, um, when it says the body, the body's death frees the spirit from the envelope that has bound it to the earth and made it suffer, and once freed of this burden, it possesses only a theory, its ethereal body, which allows it to travel space and traverse distance at the speed of thought. Um, so this all sounds first very bad for the for the body for being incarnated because we're suffering, and True. second very good when we're not because wow now all of a sudden I'm on I'm on this uh, world where I can travel at the speed of thought and I guess that comes with many other amazing um, mm. capabilities. So why why would I want to be incarnated? It, it seems like punishment. Oh, yeah. It is a prison. It's a question. Like, why? <laughs> you know why, I mean, why, why don't I just commit suicide now and, you know, free myself? In, in uh, Genesis, in Alan Kardec's Genesis, they talk about how our connection to the material world is the only way that we can evolve as spirits um, through through matter, I guess through the body or through, you know, when I read it I was thinking about how like <laughs> we have to work with our hands and like work with this physical material, but it probably actually meant just actually being united to this body, you know, the spirit being united to the body, we have to, we're here to evolve. Um, but, you know, and if you, if you, it's like if you, Somebody said it at my work one time, said, you know, if you only know a little bit about something, it can be really dangerous. <laughs> you know, they were talking about, about a truck or something. Yeah. yeah you know, but, but, but in this case, it's like, well, if you only, if you only knew that, like, that the earth is, like, the, our life here is a life of suffering, that the spirit life is not, maybe, you know, I don't want to say free of suffering, but definitely um, <laughs> there's, there's a lot less suffering. You know, For some. Yeah. But uh, taking that, taking that thought, with that note, if we also had a little bit of, um, how would I say, if we were a little bit more humble to realize how wonderful it is to be in a body experience, experiencing just for the fact that we are in a different vibration we are in a different state as our natural because our natural is the spiritual state the state of the spirit that we are here temporarily to experience temporarily things and if we were not to attach to the negative ideas 
concept, limited concept. If we were able to broaden our consciousness, we would unveil a wonderful experience, on the other hand. The time that we are here, that we forget what we were, especially the bad things, and we remain with the good things, with the values and the morals, the good ones that will permanently stay with us, those that we don't, we don't have to forget. And we get to play like an actor that every time is going to, uh, to play a character, we will have to, we, we get to play different characters. And we can totally forget what our true nature is when we are spirits versus when we are spirits. We are what we emanate, the energy we emanate. If we have the ability to take this opportunity as this wonderful temporary journey, adventure, and we will get there eventually, it would be so wonderful for us. But because of the surviving bias that the brain has, we have this tendency to go to the fear instead of the fun and the love and caring and of course it's our responsibility to reverse or to change not reverse but to change this developing our brain here on the front lobe where the happiness is but i just think that if we were just a little bit more humble to say so we are here that's the make the best of uh, the of this experience out of this experience we are here and not to think i am imprisoned in this body which the majority of the spirits when they talk with kardec in the literature that's what they say I mean, i've said it before too because we always talk about planet earth as a planet of trials and expiation yeah and when you listen to spiritists talk about earth they make it sound like a horrible terrible exactly you know, it's like it's like you know it's not all that bad like you look at like the mountains and the lakes and stuff they're pretty nice <laughs> you know like yeah we don't have the to, like, nature keep, is amazing like, talking, trash talking our planet it's, so it's a pretty cool person yeah. <laughs> it's, it's not so bad you know i think about like louis armstrong you know what a wonderful world you know, and, and <laughs> what a wonderful person it's like a beautiful <laughs> a hospital yeah i mean uh it is possible to have fun in yeah. hospital and prison like someone sent me a, a WhatsApp video. There was a guy in Brazil that he, he, he was a criminal and he got caught. A politician. So, not a politician. No, no, no. <laughs> and then, and then he, this guy was so, he, his um, self-confidence was so, so high, so high, selfishness too, that he says, it's a wonderful thing that I am a criminal. And then the reporter would say, how is that? So, uh, because of me, you have your job, the incarcerator has his job, the police has his job, the, the sheriff and the judge, and everybody, I am creating job for all of you. <laughs> it's so funny. It's so funny, but you know, it's when you right. have this mindset. It's kind of right. When we have this mindset, we can do whatever we want even if we say, uh, you know, I want to be happy no matter what I am going through. You can. It's uh, possible. Uh, yeah. We're not encouraging crime here. No. <laughs> or, 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 I hope not. Okay, I won't say anything. Else. I said, I, I'm trying to stop. That could be used against me. <laughs> you understood. You know, yeah, we can. It is just. I, I totally agree, we take this, because of our pride, it is so hard for us to sit down and talk about, holy moly, I got a spirit and I've been, I've done pretty horrible things, but I am here and I, I am born and people think I'm like a little angel and <laughs> I get to start over again and I will not remember the bad things I've done in my past and I get to start fresh whatever, whenever I want. This is wonderful, right? 
not a bad deal. No. <laughs> and uh, I was thinking about something. What? I forget. You know, uh, like in the fundamentals of spiritism, um, Alan Kardec does say too, it's like, it's, it gave me like a really warm feeling when I read it. That like, you know, because it talks about how like we have to be better people. We have to like rid ourselves of pride and selfishness and vanity and, and you know, practice charity. And, and it seems like a lot, you know, but then, and, and uh, me, I like to, I like to sort of take uh, the things I read in the gospel and beat myself up with them a lot. You know, I'm not the only one to, I know other people that do that, you know, yeah. and, and like read it and, and like I find all my faults in there. I've been there. And I, and I you know. <laughs> I've been there. I've done that. I didn't think you had any faults. That was a long time ago. Oh, okay. I'm going to keep reading it. <laughs> but, but he also says like directly after that, I think it might be the last one, that there's nothing that we do that we can't make you know, exactly. an amends for, we can't atone for. Exactly. You know, there's, there's absolutely, you know, and like God's love for us is so good. And I, I felt like really good reading that because, you yeah. know, I was like really in a, in a good place of beating myself up, you know, and yeah. I had to put the bat down for a second. <laughs> also, the, something new came up to my mind. Maybe, maybe people don't want to believe that they are spirit because if they believe in that, it is, it's a lot of work to think, oh, I'm a node spirit and I've been incarnated many, many, many times and that I need to come here to uh, evolve and to grow as a and mature my spiritual, uh, 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 my spiritual relationship with everybody, and that can haunt someone, you know, to think that too. It can be a lot of. Well, when I first read things in the spirits book, like I had been practicing spirituality for a long time, and I started reading the spirits book, and, I, and I'm like reading it, I'm going like, well, if this is true, then like I'm gonna have to make some changes in my life. And if it's, if it's not, yeah. I either have to decide, like, am I going to stay with the stuff I have, or do I want to do this? And, you know, I, I kept reading. Right. So, you know, at least at least at the time I was willing to, like, look at the stuff. I, I wasn't really ready to say, like, I didn't get the book and say, like, I'm a spiritist. You know, I, I had to, like, kind of right. read it and question yes. it myself and see yes. if it fit for me. But, like, in the reality is it's, like, a lot of the stuff was, it would have been more convenient for me <laughs> to stay where I was yes. and keep doing what I was doing. Yes. You know, I could have taken the, the blue pill and just stayed in the yes. matrix, you know. Well, and that, <laughs> yeah, that, that happens too. It happened to me. And that's a misconcept because the more attached to the body and the material world we are, more suffering we go through. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, I just, and I, I just kind of like, my thing is like if, if there's something going on, like I want to know what it is. I want to, I kind of want to know yeah. like what's real and what's not yes. real. It's that matrix. I keep going back to the matrix thing again, but I, it's like if, no, if, because if, it if is things, so. The guy like, was inspired. If, I'm if, sure if, it was. If, if I like something, if I like the way it makes me feel, but I find out that that's just like a, a temporary good feeling, like temporary uh -huh. gratification, is not like truth. It's not real. Uh -huh. Then I'm gonna stop doing it. <laughs> you know. Exactly. Um, I was thinking about another thing you said too, though, like about the responsibility uh -huh. of being a spiritist. Is that um, <laughs> is I, I went through other, other phases too, where I go like, okay, I'm a spiritist now. I have to do charity work. I have to do like volunteering. I need and, to get out of the and, and comfort I, zone. I started. Um, <laughs> I would go like to my commitments, but I would I didn't like enjoy it at all. <laughs> I really like hated doing it. it. Has to do with like what you're saying too, that um, like. Because I, I would go and, and I would be like working in the kitchen and stuff like that, just having a frown on my face and just not feeling it, little, like dreading it the entire day and get there and just like probably like putting like terrible mental fluids into the food and everybody had indigestion. Yeah. <laughs> but, but then as I kept like doing it, I realized like, I said like, why do I have to look at it that way? Why can't I look at this like a, a gift and like yeah. enjoy it? You know, like you're saying, like enjoy this plant, enjoy the body. Yeah. So I would start doing like little things just to try to, you know, uh, it really wasn't that bad. <laughs> I'm kind of exaggerating a little bit. Right, right, right. But I was like, uh, start like singing a little bit, you know, like while I'm, while I'm making the salads, like shake, 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 senora. <laughs> <You know? laughs> 
Yeah. And he put a smile on my face and put a smile on other people's faces too. And, and, yeah. And he realized like, oh, it's, a, it's like fun to do service. It's not like, it's not um, a punishment. Right. <laughs> you know, because it seems that way for us, like for, for a right. selfish person to do something selfless, it seems like a punishment. Yeah. And as you do it, you realize like it's a gift. And, mm -hmm. and yeah. you get from it. And, and then you feel like selfish for enjoying it. So true. <laughs> you know? So true. So true. And I want everybody to experience what it's like to work in the kitchen at Spirit of Center. <laughs> <And> so, <laughs> so true. So true. Yeah. I don't want to feel bad about feeling good. No, no thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so, so what, what time is it? Well, it's a little after nine. I know we started a little after eight. But, um, Whatever you like. If anybody has anything they want to say, because we're, we're at a good we point. Are at we, um, which one are we? Do we finish 14? I, I or? We're talking about 11, 12, and 13. Okay. Um, we did actually sort of talk about 14 a little bit. We'll just say, we'll just say we'll pick up at 14 next week. Cause okay. Whatever, you know. If we, if, we, if we already talked about what we want. But yeah, for this, so for next week, we'll still be on Chapter 2, starting... Uh, which is, sorry, chapter two is Elementary Notions of Spiritism, starting on item number 14. If you're on a WhatsApp group, I'll send you a reminder. If I remember, I usually remember, I'll send you a reminder. The text is available to download if you contact Steve or Cynthia or, you know, this guy. Hey. <laughs> he helps out too. Um, and then, uh, what else? Um, what else? Oh, we have a. Uh we're going to have a special guest from Brazil, September 6th. 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 7th. Oh my God. It's going to be a Wednesday. This guy is very special. Do not miss this talk. It's going to be on September 6th. The Talking 6th. about the Paris Spirit and Science, right? I think it's medicine. I think, been, yeah. He's probably been listening to our discussions. And That's why. He's yeah. getting all his ideas from it's here. It's okay, though, because, you know, I'm That's okay with That's true. It. I knew it. Anyways, and uh, he's a physician from Brazil. He's a guy that has a um, very knowledgeable guy about quantum physics, spiritism, and, and medicine. So if you want to get more information, get in touch with us. It's going to be September the 6th at 8.15. Be here around 8 o'clock. Be here or at your computer or cell phone. Oh, also, I want to invite everyone to come for the, if you need a spiritual treatment, we have a spiritual treatment here in English every Thursday at 7 p.m. Please do come. Come here and we will talk to you. Let me just say that. It's a spiritual treatment. It's like a, a no no brainer. It's a spiritual treatment. If you need a spiritual treatment, Come, it's free of charge. Broward Spirit Society does not charge, okay? So you, you can come here, show up, I'll, I'll, I'll explain it to you. And meditation. And meditation every Tuesday at 7 o'clock. And we meet here Tuesday, 8 o'clock, if you're not watching it live, if you're watching it later. Tuesday night, 8 o'clock, we meet here at Broward Spirit Society, and it's open. For, you can see we've got some empty chairs. Mm -hmm. Come, they, and, come and disagree with us. They look, yeah. They look empty because we can't see all the spirits that are here helping us. But yeah. <laughs> they're, they'll, they're glad they, there's, there's plenty of seats here. Um, and uh, I don't know what else to say. Good night. That's it. So yeah, well, thank, <laughs> thanks everybody for joining us. Contact us if you have any questions. Um, and uh, we'll see you next week, next Tuesday night. Same bad time, same bad channel. Okay, Scott. Bye. I cannot read you from that far away. <laughs> <laughs> I want that program to...